Now, I think what I'm about to say is probably going to make some people unhappy, and, you know, plenty of people are going to disagree with me, but of all the cars I've driven for less than $50,000, this has been the most fun to drive. It's more fun than the GTI, more fun than the Mustang, more fun than the BRZ or the FRS, uh, more fun than the WRX, more fun than the Evo, and I'm going to reluctantly admit this has been more fun to drive than my STI. I think the best analogy to describe the Miata is that it's like a really nice $10 wine. Yes, you can pay more and you can get something uh, you know that's much more expensive, uh, much more exotic and does taste better, but ultimately the chemical reaction that's happening in your brain is the exact same. And in the same sense, the Miata can provide just as much joy as a lot of the big hitters out there. Now, before you get the wrong idea, the Miata does have its drawbacks. The sun visors are a cheap plastic. Well, yeah, but that removes weight and keeps down costs. Okay, well, look at these cup holders. Yeah, but weight reduction. There's not even a glove box. Well, sure, I get it, but that also pulls out weight. I mean, you and I didn't get like this by eating luxury food all day. All right, well, that's a fair point, but what about the steering wheel? I mean, there's no telescoping in it, so I can't pull it in and out. I'd like to bring it a little bit closer, and when I pull my foot off the clutch, I end up hitting the steering wheel with my knee. Okay, well, there's no excuse for that. But on second thought, I mean, it does help keep the weight down. And in fact, the new MX-5 truly is a great story of weight reduction. The 2016 Miata is about 150 pounds lighter than the generation it replaces. All of the exterior panels, with the exception of the doors and windshield frame, are made from aluminum, saving around 45 pounds. Nearly 17 pounds have been removed from each seat by using a urethane material rather than traditional springs. And this also allows the seats to be positioned lower, improving the center of gravity. 26 pounds have been taken out of the suspension, 14 pounds from the front brake rotors, the transmission is 16 pounds lighter and the drive shaft is down 3 pounds, and 8 pounds have been removed from the instrument and air conditioning. Even the headlights are shallower and shorter, 15% lighter than the previous model. Under the hood is a 2-liter naturally aspirated inline 4-cylinder engine. This features an aluminum block and head as well as variable valve timing on the intake. With a high compression ratio of 13 to 1, it produces 155 horsepower at 6,000 RPM and 148 pound-feet of torque at 4,600 RPM. As you can see, the engine is pushed back significantly with the front of the block around where the strut towers are located. This of course helps keep the mass centered in the vehicle, increasing agility and providing a better weight distribution. Now with all this weight reduction, what's this vehicle like to drive? Now, I know I'm an engineer and I'm supposed to be rational and speak objectively about this, uh, but I'm just so emotionally in love with this vehicle. It's so much fun to drive. And I think the reason why I love it so much is just the philosophy that they take. I mean, everyone's in this sports car game and they're all just trying to one-up each other on horsepower. And every year there's something more ridiculous and horsepower numbers are always inflating and they're always going up and there's always someone that's faster. This takes a completely different route. Instead of saying, hey, I'm going to be the next Hellcat, I'm going to be the next thing with this ridiculous amount of horsepower so everyone talks about it, uh, instead it chooses weight reduction, and that's so much more fun to drive. When you get in this vehicle, I mean, it's so responsive. Uh, car and drivers said, you know, all you need is one turn, and you're basically going to fall in love with this and realize it's a driver's car, and it's so true. It's so much fun to drive. You know, 2,330 pounds, that's insanely lightweight. They've taken out so much weight from this, and that just gives you so much more of a dynamic feel, and so it's very rewarding to drive. The steering doesn't have a really high ratio, you know, you do turn it quite a bit to get it to turn in, you know, it's a, a normal average ratio, I'd say, but it's very responsive. It responds immediately once you do turn it in. And even though it is an electric system, I do find that it has pretty good feedback. There have been a little quirks on the highway where it seems to provide a little bit of artificial feedback, but aside from that, in these mountain roads, I haven't noticed anything wrong with it. It provides good feedback, and you know what's happening with those front tires. So here's the fun part coming into some corners. Drop it down into second gear. And yes, you know, the car does have actually quite a bit of body roll, but it doesn't feel uncontrolled. You always do feel like you're in control. It's very well balanced. <laughs> you can get a little bit of oversteer if you want it. <laughs> very easy to do, in fact. You know, the gearing here is actually really aggressive. It only has 155 horsepower, and you might think, oh, that's not enough horsepower. Honestly, the way they've geared it, you don't feel like you're lacking horsepower. 
It's got really aggressive gearing. In fact, there is no overdrive gear. Six gear is a one-to-one -one ratio, and everything beneath that uh, is a higher ratio. And so, you know, when you're in these lower gears, you've always got torque available. First gear tops off around 30 miles an hour, seconds around 50, uh, and third will get you well past 60 miles per hour, probably in the 70s region. It's just immensely fun going through these corners, though. It does exactly what you want it to do. It behaves exactly as you predict it will, and that's just so rewarding to have in a car. And I think it even has a little bit more, uh, you know, aggressiveness than the BRZ that I drove. It seems to be a little more fun, a little more lively than the BRZ, and I really loved driving that car. So, you know, for this to be feel even better than that is, is just unreal. Now, as far as the gear shifting, uh, it is a little bit notchy. I could see someone complaining about that, but it does feel very solid, very precise as you actuate through. And also what I love is the clutch. So the clutch uses the entire range uh, in order to bite. And so the second your foot starts coming off the floor, you start to get acceleration as it starts gripping that clutch. Also worth mentioning with the manual transmission is that if you do get the club, which is the version that I'm in, it comes with a limited slip differential. The manual transmission is 50 pounds lighter than the automatic and you know the added benefit of if you get the club you're gonna have a limited slip diff versus if you get the auto club uh, you're gonna have more weight and you're gonna have an open differential that's not exciting get the manual another thing that's pretty remarkable though not all that surprising about this vehicle is how great a fuel economy it gets it's rated 27 in the city 34 on the highway and in my own testing I managed 44 on my fuel economy test scores 44 miles per gallon in a rear-wheel drive sports car. It's fantastic that you can get those numbers from it. And yes, you know, the digital rating can read high, but I have no doubt that with the size of this vehicle, the weight of it, the low frontal area, uh, and the small engine with the high compression ratio, I'm sure you can get really good fuel economy numbers out of it. Now, as far as the seating position, I did mention that I wish the steering wheel had telescoping so that I could pull a little closer to me, and also so that I wouldn't have my knees kind of running into it as I'm shifting gears or trying to get onto the brake pedal things like that. That said, the seats are extremely comfortable, and I'm surprised by that because they're thinner than the previous generation's model, so I thought they'd be pretty rigid. They've actually got a really good amount of cushion to them, and also the backs of them, it kind of feels like you're laying in a hammock. And I'm not joking about this, I mean, it really does kind of feel like you're laying in a net. So it, it kind of has this uh, resistance to it where it, it kind of follows your body. It's not like a rigid block of foam. Instead, it's kind of taken off of the seat a little bit, uh, and so you can feel it as you lean back into it. It's your Kind of just laying into this hammock and honestly it's a really really comfortable position through these low speed corners i mean it's just so predictable so easy to drive at the limit and it's so much fun to do it <laughs> it's so well balanced perfectly in control and you can scare yourself if you want to by putting your foot down. I mean, the gearing really does allow you to spin those rear tires pretty easily if you're committed. Now, as far as the throttle and the brake pedal, the brake pedal doesn't have a ton of travel, uh, but it's about an average range. It's nothing super short. And both the throttle and the brake pedal feel like they have a very linear uh, line to them as far as how much you press in and how much you get out of it. And so I do really like that. It gives you a really easy ability to control the amount of throttle or braking you want, depending on how hard you press either of them in. Very simple to modulate. Okay, so we're gonna get a quick zero to 60 in. Uh, I've got traction control off. I'm gonna rev it up just above 2,000 RPM and then let the clutch out. Anything higher, it tends to just spin the wheels and hopefully we'll get a good time in. driving on the highway doing about 65 here uh, you know you do get quite a bit of noise that's what happens when you take all of the weight out of a vehicle it's noisy at higher speeds uh, with the top up I measured about 84 85 decibels so it is louder than all of the other vehicles which I've tested but that said of the vehicles I've tested with four wheels uh, this is the lightest of all of them so you know you make that sacrifice in removing weight uh, it's not unbearable it's certainly something you could deal with 
Now, is it practical? Absolutely not. It only seats two people. The trunk, although larger than the previous generation, is still pretty small. Uh, and, you know, it's rear-wheel drive. So if you're in snow or inclement conditions, you know it's not going to be the best handling car out there. Uh, but as a weekend warrior or as a daily driver in good conditions, it doesn't get any more fun than this. Mazda, you've done a phenomenal job with the engineering and the design of this vehicle. They deserve all the applause they get for this car. It's absolutely insane. I love it. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Have you ever wondered what happens if you use your windshield washer fluid while you've got the convertible top down?